Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about part 2 of ITGC interview series. Thanks for sharing a great response on my first video which motivate me to make the part 2 of this video and in this video we're also going to discuss about the scenario based questions which is frequently asked in the jobs and these questions are based on the feedback which I collected from the participants, my, my students who go for the exam, uh, go for this uh, jobs applications and all that. My name is Prab and for more, more information you can check my LinkedIn profile. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first interview question, how do you approach the evaluation of control deficiencies? Can you give an example of a deficiency uh, you identified and the practical recommendation you provide for remediation? I'll tell you why interviewer asked this question. Interviewer want to understand whether you have a real knowledge, you have a real experience or you have a theoretical knowledge. And that is the reason in mostly in the big four, they basically focus uh, on the candidate by asking these questions because if you see the question they're talking about evaluation of a control deficiency because that is the most important skill the auditor need to understand and that's why they say okay can you help me with one examples so how to answer this question so if you ask me I will start with the perspective of I start by okay so when you use the word called I start by you basically talking about experience so I start by so thank you for asking this question you know one of the example I want to share is uh, I normally start understanding the control objectives and the risk that is basically supposed to mitigate for instances I once identified that backup process was were not tested regularly so here you can see I, I have exp I shown them that okay I have experience okay so I have taken the example here like you know once I identify backup process which was not tested regularly and this was a critical deficiency because it means that organization could could not be sure they could recover the data in the case of failure second point when you say such statement it, it reflect your your focus for the organizations and uh, it also give the confidence in the interviewer okay uh, the person knows about how to identify deficiency and also understand the risk from the enterprise perspective okay so this is how we need to see that so then I can recommend the, you know, we should have a regular scheduled backups test and ensure, you know, automation tools to verify the integrity of backup. And additionally, I suggest the training IT staff on the new processes and these recommendations were implemented and I subsequently audit show that backup was been tested regularly and ensure the data availability and reliability. So moral of the story is that question was asked about what is an approach you take to evaluate the control deficiencies and they have asked me can you give me example so I told them first I will understand the control objective okay before control objective I need to understand the business then based on a business we basically try to understand the control objectives then I will assess if the deficiency is design or operational so example I give about inconsistent backup testing as a process and I also talk about the concern if we don't uh, test the proper backup because if tomorrow any incident happen and we want to recover the data if we could not able to recover the defined data we might face a reputation loss legal loss okay data loss and all that so as a thing I recommend them we need to have a formal backup testing schedules and uh, I will also check the artifacts it has been done or not we compare the logs and everything and I always recommend to go for the automation tools because it is one of the fastest way to validate the things I trained IT staff on the new procedure I will recommend to train staff on the new procedures and by that we can able to improve the backup reliability and data availability so if you can see in this entire answer I talk about the introduction I talk about the examples and I also talk about the action plan sorry recommendations and my recommendations are more cost effective and map with the business requirement so that is how you have to answer the questions okay in the in the interview so that shows your job power reflections of experience and all that so let's move to the next question 
Okay, so next interview question. What criteria do you use to determine the severity of a control deficiency and prioritize remediation effort? So by asking this question, you know, the interviewer want to assess you on the area called um, BIA. And uh, when we having a multiple controls, multiple risk and all that, how you identify, how you prioritize. So that visibility we get, uh, you know, uh, when the interviewer asks this question. So how to answer such questions? So let me suggest you. So I will say, okay, I use a risk based approach, okay, to determine the severity of the control deficiencies. So here I'm, I'm using a risk based approach to identify the severity of the, uh, what you called risk deficiency. So that is something we can basically consider. And uh, we also consider different factors to include in the potential impact on the organization, like likelihood of occurrence. Now, when we say likelihood of occurrence is basically mean the threat is basically exploiting a vulnerability. How many time? And if it occur, what is the impact? So let's say an example is this is basically my firewall and this is basically my web server. OK, so there is a likelihood that hacker can exploit the weakness in the firewall to gain access to the server. So this is called as a likelihood. And if you gain access, the impact is basically high because it holds the PI data. So question say determine the severity of the control deficiencies. Okay, so when we see the list of so many control deficiencies, we need to prioritize. Okay, so here I will analyze the likelihood of occurrence and the criticality of the affected system or data. So here what I'm doing is to show the interviewer my experience. I will say, okay, for instances, there is a deficiencies. For instances, there is a deficiency which could lead to the financial misstatement or data breach would be rated higher in the several you can say severity uh, compared to the minor procedural lapse so in one cases um, i found that critical financial systems lacked proper access control which basically posed a high risk for the fraud so wh when i'm sharing my experience it basically bring more positivity it bring more impact in the round right and then when i identify this this issue was prioritized for an immediate remediation whereas a minor procedural lapse was scheduled for a later so same thing here web server basically have a financial statement i know that okay hacker can able to hack and they can able to access sensitive information for me i need to patch this or we also have other vulnerabilities like you know access of physical system and all that that is not my priority my priority was that the server was exposed on the internet so for me i want to patch that so this is how i evaluate the criticality of the affected systems i see what is the impact from a business vision perspective and according to that i took the call okay then I basically prioritize high severity issue for the immediate attention and low severity issue schedule for a remediation with the reasonable time frame. So this is the approach. Uh, I ensure the resource are focused on mitigating a more significant risk first. Okay, so that is how you need to answer. So summary is that use a risk based approach. Now when we're talking about uh, you can say risk based approach. So we have an asset based approach, we have a risk based approach. So risk based approach is basically where we determine the control deficiency, focus on identifying and prioritizing the deficiency in the organization internal control based on the level of risk they pose to the organization. So I'm not going by any inventory of assets. Here then we identify the impact on the organization. Then we basically assess the likelihood of occurrence and then we document the threat and vulnerability. And then we prioritize which one is important. I will patch that first and low sensitivity issues will be patched later. Again, it is depending upon the business. If you're working for e-commerce, anything which map with availability, I have to prioritize that first. If I'm working in the healthcare, if I'm working in the defense sectors and all that, for me, confidentiality, severity will be my first priority. So that is how I basically uh, prioritize my particular efforts. So let's move to the next question. Thank you. Another interesting question. Have you ever identified area for improvement in the ICT control testing method and describe a situation where you enhance the testing process or tool? Now, sometime when they ask such kind of a questions, they basically want to understand how good you are with the control monitoring, how good you are with the recommendation approach. So how to answer such kind of a question. So in my case, if, if they ask me, I say, okay, as a, at, at a previous company, I noticed that our ICT control testing rely heavily on the manual process. Okay. So here what happened, I identify the issue of manual process. And normally when we go for manual process, which is very insufficient and prone to errors because we have a dependency on human. 
So uh, what I did is I proposed to implement the automation testing tool and by that we basically achieve multiple benefit. The first benefit we can get is faster way to detect the issues. Second is basically productivity will be high and cost will be low because instead of hiring a seven professional to manage those control, we can have one tool to manage everything. So by this way, I propose not only the solution, but I also give them up from a, a business perspective as a good answer. So I, I told them, okay, I propose implementing an automation testing tool that could perform the continuous control checks and generate the real time report. And this, this tool basically streamline the testing process. This tool is basically reduce the time which is required for testing and increase the accuracy also. And it also allow us to expand our testing scope, providing uh, what you can say, uh, providing us more comprehensive assurance also. Okay, and this improvement was well received and led to the letter or better resource allocation and enhance the audit quality. So by when, when I'm giving such kind of a scenarios, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm also talking about how the control is creating a business impact business opportunity with a limited cost, it basically give a great value to the interviewer. Okay, so this is how I answer the question. So let's move to the next question. Thank you. Another interesting question. How do you stay current with the new methodology and tools for ICT control testing? Can you mention any specific tool or framework you have found particularly effective? See, by asking this question, the, they want to understand the candidate learning skills how good he with the learning, how you want to improve his learning process. Is it updating his knowledge and all that? Is the person is dynamic? Can we, can the person adapt according to the organization environment? So they ask, that's why they ask this question. So the, the, so how to answer such question? So I say, okay, uh, thank you for asking this question. Uh, it is, it is very important as an auditor, as a, as a consultant, I need to be update my knowledge. I need to upgrade my knowledge because then only I can able to identify the control issues in the new threats. So what I used to do is I attend the conferences. So I'm, I'm a CISA, I'm serious. So I'm CISAM. So I'm, I'm part of a ISACA community chapter. So they have these weekly meetings in a month where I attend that meeting, where I get a new insight about industries. There's also sent a lot of publications. Okay, so I stay updated by attending this industry conferences, participating in a webinars. I also read a lot of publications which give me a leading, uh, give me a great visibility, which is coming from a leading organization, ISACA and IIA, which is from auditor perspective. Then I also network with peer groups and all that. Definitely we are not sharing any confidential information there, but I get a visibility about what is happening in the industry. And one tool which I found particularly effective is called RSA Archer, a GRC platform tool, which can be integrated the control testing, risk management and compliance tracking into the one solution. And for the industry framework, I refer the COVID and NIST, which provide me the comprehensive guideline for implementing and assessing the ICT control environment. So this is how I basically update my knowledge. So when you're giving such kind of a statement and you're giving your opinion about the best tool that that shows you have experience on that particular area. So do let me know how do you find this particular ITGC series and shall I continue the series with this new videos in a few weeks based on your approvals and I'm sure it will create more value in your life. And if you think my videos are worth and all that, do reshare in your network to subscribe to the channel and, and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting your time, thank you so much and do subscribe to my channel. Good day. Bye.